of course, in the background is Manhattan. So we're in, I'm in Jersey City, about ready to go on to the ferry to go see the Statue of Liberty. So let's stay tuned. Here we are, everybody. The Atlantic Ocean. Where's the ferry? Where is that damn ferry? Looking for a ferry. I think it's down this way. And uh, ordinary, on an ordinary day in America, this would probably be packed with people. Because uh, who doesn't want to see the Statue of Liberty? Now, I think today is kind of a, a unique day because I'm bringing you the Liberty Bell from Philadelphia and the Statue of Liberty from New York all in one day. It's a very, it's a very Liberty-type day. But uh, we're going to find out about this structure here. Do you think they would have torn it down by now? looks very old. I'm, I'm going to guess it's the processing center for when all the Americans were flooding into America to make it in America. And there in the background, everybody, is Manhattan. How about that? It's beautiful, even on a cloudy day. And someone's got a nice sailboat in the harbor here. Stay tuned for action at the Statue of Liberty. Just another shot of Manhattan. And in the distance, New York. And of course, Jersey City. I heard New York was dead, but New Jersey is quite dead. I can't imagine this thing's open, but she did say get the tickets at the red building. This looks pretty red to me. Okay, so my guess was wrong. This was a train depot. All the trains pulled into here. The Newark trains, the trains going all over the place. This was a train steeple. And we're going to buy some tickets right now. Well, it didn't look very nice from the outside, but sure is gorgeous on the inside. So this was a train station once they arrived. So this one's going to Philadelphia. Carteret Chrome, track eight, my favorite number. Philadelphia Express. Track 10 is going to, is the Blue Comet. Dining car attached. Look at that. Queen of the Valley. Going to Harrisburg and Easton and High Bridge. Oh, look, here's a coal car, I think. That's been used in quite a while, looks like. There you go, coal car. Look at that. Great uh, location for a movie. Yeah, it's the Suburbanite. The rare ten train. Pretty interesting. And now we're going to go to... Ferris Island in 20 minutes. Well, we got through security again because I didn't mention it on the, the Liberty Bell video that you might have watched, but they you have to empty your pockets like you're going into a federal building uh, just to see the Liberty Bell. And of course, to see Ellis Island, the same thing. So make sure you dump your, your, your pot pen or, or your gun uh, and um, as you go through security. So we're going to go on the Miss New Jersey for a little boat ride to go over to Ellis Island. Well, I talked to the captain, and like a lot of people, uh, companies don't like, I don't know why I don't like free, I don't know why they don't like free exposure, but that was free exposure for um, the, the hornblower cruises and the captain. But it uh, was funny because he started out as a deckhand here and then went to college and paid his way through college. And then he couldn't find a job, so he got a job working on the boat, and he's been there uh, ever since, probably 40, 50 years. At any rate, so the, I guess the, the deal is there's Ellis Island, the first stop, and then Statue of Liberty, the second stop. And I asked him about the train station. So in the old days, you would take a train, and it stopped there, and then you take a ferry, and you ferry across to New York and Manhattan. So that's pretty cool. A little history. Working on a journey of great historical Ellis Island is the principal gateway for immigrants arriving into the U.S. between 1892 and 1924. Our current force recalls the voyages of approximately 12 million American immigrants. They passed through 
headquarters on their way to Ellis Island Avenue Life. By the time they reached New York City Harbor, they had already spent weeks at sea, usually on the small, overcrowded steerage decks of NASA steamships. They were often excited, exhausted, and anxious about what lay ahead. As they near the end of their journey, these immigrants were greeted by a number of overwhelming sights. Many of these same sights are visible to you today. Look at the Manhattan skyline. Imagine the awe these new arrivals must have felt as the city's last vista emerged above the waves. Many New York landscapes were like nothing they had ever seen before. Finally, the lumbering sea beams stopped in New York City's bustling port and passengers were checked by immigration officials before being allowed into the U.S. Prior to 1892, most immigrants passed through Castle Garden, a former military installation now located in Battery Park at the tip of Lower Manhattan. Over the years, it had served as a theater, an opera house, and an aquarium. It is now a National Park Service site known as Castle Clint. When the federal government took over the processing of immigrants in the 1890s, a new receiving station was constructed on Ellis Island. By the beginning of the 20th century, thousands reached the island's shores every day. You will have the opportunity to learn much more about these immigrants and their experiences during your visit today. The main building of the Ellis Island Immigration Station Complex has been restored and is now a museum containing three floors of self-guided exhibits. Information is available at the desk on the main floor. An important audio tour is included with your ticket and may be picked up when you arrive on each island. It includes a 30-minute Statue of Liberty audio tour and a 45-minute audio tour of the Ellis Island Museum. Food and gift services are available both aboard this vessel and on the main level of the museum. Eating and drinking are permitted only in designated areas. For those traveling with groups of children, the National Park Service requires that there be one chaperone with every ten children, and that the group remain together at all times. Three, a man in flight. A leader steps forward. The people get together. They help each other out. They make their own places for fun, play, comfort, and humor. Pride, gratitude, and fun. It belongs to everyone. It can be a place. A feeling, a state of mind. So get up, get out there, and find your part. It's quite gorgeous. I don't know if the patience to go for an hour tour, though. Attention, please. We are now approaching a dockside landing. If you are seated, please remain in your seats. Please exercise caution when standing or moving around the decks, should there be any unexpected vessel movement. Please hold handrails whenever possible, particularly on stairways. There it is, Ellis Island. 12 million people walk through these gates. And the United States. The statue has since become a universal symbol of our nation's freedom, opportunity, security, and future. Enjoy your view of this great monument as we approach Liberty Island today. This view is similar to the one seen by many thousands of immigrants as they entered the U.S. by steamship. When the ships neared New York, the shining torch of the Statue of Liberty rose from the bay. Shouts and cries of joy would erupt from the steamer decks. For many, liberty enlightening the world, as the statue is officially titled, symbolized the freedom and opportunity that awaited them in their new land. The steamers proceeded on into New York's harbor, and passengers got their first glimpses of the Manhattan skyline including the Brooklyn Bridge, which spans the East River between Manhattan and Brooklyn. You may be able to spot its stone towers today. Over the years, several newer bridges and 
been added to the harbor's landscape, including the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which connects Brooklyn and Staten Island. If you look out beyond the Statue of Liberty, you might see the Verrazano Bridge in the distance. It's the longest suspension bridge in the United States. As the passenger ships continued north toward their docks in Manhattan, they also passed Governor's Island across the harbor to the east. It's strategically located near the mouth of the East River and was once the site of the coastal fortifications built to defend New York Harbor. In 2001, it was declared a national monument. Listen up, so you're probably not going to get a good audio on this, but there she stands in all her glory. And of course, like everything else in the country and around the world, she's closed. Can't go up into her tower, into her hat, and look out, which I did before about 50 years ago. What do they say? God bless America. The land of freedom, the home of the brave. And then we have the wildlife on Liberty Island. And we've got a beautiful statue. 155 feet tall. The French gave it to us. Celebration, I guess, of our 100th anniversary. And we can't go up it because it's closed. And there's the view she gets to look out. New York Bay, I guess it's called. So I've got park ranger William Capsalis. 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 Underneath the Statue of Liberty. How long have you been working here? 2004. 2004, so you know it pretty well. Every day on the island? Uh, I work here uh, rarely on Ellis, usually with the island. Now I notice Ellis had a lot of barrack type things. Did people, a lot of people live on the island in the old days? This, both this island and Ellis Island, you had people living on it in okay. the old days. Okay. Uh, Ellis hasn't had anybody living there since. So. 50s, I imagine. Even before that, this island used to have people living on it until about 2012. Oh, that recent? Yeah. Wow. Superintendents, personnel. Yeah, the top dogs. Fancy restaurant and all that stuff. Uh, well, great views of the city, no matter what. <laughs> I'm not sure about the dog. Exactly. Whatever you made. And you're a New Yorker. Native New Yorker from Queens, New York. So I haven't been in New York in 50 years. Has it changed at all? That's all New York ever does. <laughs> yeah. So what do you recommend we see uh, in the couple days that we'll be here? Uh, yeah, 50 years ago. 50 years. <laughs> that is fairly similar to what it was, but it's still one of those beautiful parts. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. And I'm not sure uh, what they opened there in terms of the zoo or anything like that, but always worth a visit as you stroll through I suggest that. And since the city's empty these days, it's great to have the streets to yourself and just look at things like being bumped into it. That's what I'm looking forward to, is photographing the city as it's never been before, yeah. Yeah. or ever been, probably. And, of course, cr walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. Walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. It's not going to be crowded with people. Brooklyn Bridge gives you some phenomenal views, and it's the most beautiful bridge in the world. Okay, well, thanks for that advice. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you for coming. There's the Miss Jersey pulling in to Liberty Island. Overpopulated cities around the world have caused people to become a greedy, selfish, and litigious society. Would you like to be happier, live longer, never be forgotten, and help make the world a kinder, more civil place? It's actually easier than you think. Every day you're asked, how are you? Instead of saying good, say, I am fantastic. It will make you look better, feel great, and reduce your stress. Making the world a better place starts with each person. 
Please join the Be Fantastic movement today. What you want to be, you can be. Be fantastic.